Welcome to the sit down, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my good people out there. My name is Dedi Sei. Today I'm in Calgary and the, the face you have is very familiar. I prefer to call them celebrities, right? Um, welcome, Mr. Jola. Thank you so much. How are you doing today? I am doing well. Okay. How are you? I'm fine. I'm, I'm well. It's good. a bit cold outside. Oh, I know. It's like winter now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Must have been hard driving it. Of course. How, yeah. how are you coping with the winter so far? I mean... To be honest, I don't mind it. Okay. I think after 17 years, yeah. I've gotten a little used to it. Yeah. Not fully. Yeah. But we've gotten used to it. Okay. Like we can dress properly yeah. and go out and stay warm and yes. cozy. So, yes. Yes. yeah. Yes. Okay. And talking about dressing up. So, yes. what's this outfit about? <laughs> oh, well, okay. So, yes. today, yes. I am wearing this gorgeous certain print yes um, if you are one of my followers so you have been following me for a little while mm. you probably know by now how much I love tartan now tartan is a Scottish fabric it's very well known in Scotland yes it's one of their main fabrics that okay. they wear it comes yeah. in a lot of different colors as well yes. and so for me I've always loved that Okay. And I love the kilt style wrap skirts, so I have plenty of those. Oh, okay. And when I saw this one, yes. I just knew I had to buy it. Okay. Now, it came with a matching corset as well. Okay. Now, both sets are from Simon's. Absolutely love it. Okay. And then I just needed something to wear underneath. So mm -hmm. I have another dress yeah. <laughs> under here. Yeah. Um, but yes, I do love this outfit. It feels more me. So mm -hmm. this is like an everyday outfit for me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it looks beautiful. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, do you ever combine colors that are clashing Oof. when, when you have an outfit? All the time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just go and look on my TikTok okay. and also my Facebook. Yeah. Um, I've been getting a lot of flack honestly on some of the outfits I'll put together and go out. Okay. People are like, that's way too many colors. And I'm like, but I feel like it. I yes. like it. I'm going to yeah. wear it out, you know. Yeah. Um, I love colors. And okay. so you're definitely going to see me in at least four colors per day. Okay. That's just a typical outfit for me. Okay. Okay. Um, beiges and grays and like the neutral tones are not my thing. But every once in a while, I'll yes. put, you know, a monochromatic tone on tone kind of yes. just 
plain outfit. Yes. I'm okay with that. But a lot of the times, I'm all about the colors. Oh, okay. Yeah. How about the necklace and earrings? Um, my earrings is from Hudson's Bay. Yes. It's extremely old as well. Now, I do have a lot of things in my closet <laughs> okay. that are old. So people are always asking me, where's this from? Where's this from? I'm like, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. I had this thing in my closet for like 10, 15 years, maybe even 17 years oh, wow. now. Wow. So I wish I can tell you where to find them, but I can't. Yes. Um, the necklace, I bought it from a local jewelry designer here in Calgary, oh, actually. Nice. It's okay. called Cher Love Stones. Yes. Love her. I used to work with her at the Bay, and okay. she recently just started handmaking those necklaces oh. and like oh, nice. bracelets and rings. Yeah. Absolutely love them. So, yeah. And of course, yeah. the classic South Sudanese flag. Oh, yes. I yes. got mine back in 2013, actually. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it doesn't come off much, you know. Oh, okay. It's one of those things that it doesn't matter where I'm going, yes. it's always on my wrist. So, so um, representing South Sudan, yes. I guess you are a proud South Sudanese? I am. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. T tell us about yourself. Um, when you meet someone new, how do you introduce yourself? Who is a chola? Oh, well, <laughs> that's... I don't know, because okay. a lot of the times I like to think of myself just as Stella Achola, okay. um, but I am definitely trying to get more comfortable introducing myself to people as, you know, hey, my name is Estella, yes. I am a fashion stylist okay. here in the city, um, but I'm also a content creator, okay. so I do a lot of fashion videos yes. just to inspire, you know, outfits of the days and things like that, yes. but I also like to use my country's music yes so you will be getting ready with me with south sudanese music because <laughs> i want to introduce you guys to some of the talents yes. we have in our country so oh, okay yeah um let, let's get into your daily life uh, what time did you wake up in the morning today oh today i was up at 5 53 6 a.m ish yeah. but i didn't leave my bed until like 7.30, okay. almost 8. Okay. It's a Sunday, so... <laughs> I know. Sunday is usually my sleep-in day okay. because I work Tuesdays to Saturdays, so yeah. Sundays usually I like to catch up on my sleep. Okay. Um, unless I have, like, a shopping appointment, okay. I'm usually in my bed until, like, noon. Uh, and shopping then I'll get appointment a, from somebody or...? Yes, for clients and oh, whatnot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, um, so unless I have that, a lot mm -hmm. of the times... I don't leave my bed until noon and then, you know, create a content okay. after figuring out what to eat and okay. whatnot. So when you talk about uh, shopping appointment uh, yeah. uh, from clients, what does that mean? Um, so as a stylist, I work with a lot of people yeah. here in Calgary. Okay. Um, just local people as well, not yes. just celebrities. Yes. Now, normally what happens is people will reach out to me. I call them just, you know, to get a little bit of details as to what they're looking for mm -hmm. and, you know, what their budget are as well, what okay. their style is, to kind of just get a feel okay. of what they're looking to okay. find okay. In, during a shopping appointment. Okay. And so when I talk about appointments, what happens usually on that day yeah. is when you come into the appointment, yeah. I have everything set up. So we book an appointment, what time it is you're coming in, which store you'll be meeting me at, okay. and things like that. Okay. We meet at the store, yeah. you come in, and I'll usually have everything set up for you. So when you come in, you're only coming in to try on clothes and okay. decide which ones you like, which yeah. ones you don't like, okay. um, you know, what else you would like to try on if it's not already selected on there. Yeah. And that's really it about the appointments. So do, do, you, do you mostly go with the client's preference or you make suggestions to them? Um, so after speaking with them, a lot of the time I'll get an idea oh, okay. of what they're looking for. Okay. And just based on that, I will pull for them things that I think they should try, okay. but also think that they want to try. Oh, okay. So it is you know, a team effort. Yes. I usually ask the customer to go onto that store website, okay. take a look at some of the things and send me oh, okay. some things that you love oh, okay. or you would like to try. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so when I go into the store, I pull the things that you like, yeah. but I also grab you new things that I think you should try. Oh, okay. And a lot of the times, you know, I like people to try things that are outside of their box. Okay. Because <laughs> you'll be surprised. Yeah. Like I hear from a lot of customers that, you know what, mm. 50 of the stuff on here, I would have never picked them myself. Oh, okay. Um, but thank you for okay. like for suggesting them oh, okay. or, you know, for pushing me to try them because okay. I love them and yeah. that's the best part of my job. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, so le let's um, get into, because you're doing fashion yes. and often your, your, your biggest asset is your body. How yes. do you keep your body fit and slender? I mean, it's <laughs> it's probably enviable to so many oh. people out there, right? Well, thank you so much. Now, to be honest with you, I do not have, like, I don't work out. Okay. That's number one. Okay. Um, number two, I don't have a diet. Okay. I think I was just blessed oh, with good okay. genes. Oh, nice. Uh, but I also learn. I learned to study. Okay. and kind of just pay attention okay. to my body. Okay. I notice that sometimes when I am indulging in a lot of sweets, yes. I gain some weight. Oh, okay. And the way I can tell is just by how my clothes fit because I don't weigh myself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if an item fits a little bit tighter, I know I'm like, ooh, maybe we're getting down. a little up there. Let's yeah. just cut down on the sugars or yeah. cut down on the salt okay. or you know, maybe I've been consuming a lot of junk food yes. for the weeks or month, you know, mm -hmm. let's cut that down. Um, but my diet, to be honest with you, I just learned to kind of skip a meal okay. in between. Yeah. So people usually will have like three meals a day. Okay. I, for one, I do not like breakfast. So a lot of the times yeah. I skip on the breakfast. Yes. I have lunch. Yeah. And I just snack a lot throughout oh, the day. Okay. And so when I come home, I'll have, you know, my dinner and then I go to sleep. Yeah. Or if I start my day, let's say with a breakfast, yes. I will skip a lunch yeah. and then just have dinner when I get home. Oh, okay. But always snacks in between. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So I don't know if that makes any sense <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it <laughs> on how we sense. keep fit. Yeah. But, you know, that's how I keep fit. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. T take us back to those early years. Where were you born? Where did you grow up? Oh, I was born and raised in Juba. Yes. And now I was born, I think, in, mm, let me see, Haibuluk. Haibuluk, okay. Right? Yeah. But I grew up in Haisora. Yes. And then for most of my teen, I lived in Hainyakama. Okay. I actually still remember <laughs> all my little houses. Okay. Um, but yes, that's where I grew up. Yeah. And then from there, I came to Egypt yes. in 2010, no, 2003. Okay. I was in Cairo for about three years before coming to Canada in 2006. Oh, okay. oh, so, okay. oh yeah. wow. So uh, what was your memory of those years of little Achola growing up in Juba? Oh, I mean, Achola has always been a rebel, to okay. be honest. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, she had always loved fashion. Okay. I remember just growing up and my mom buying us different clothes than all the other kids yes. at Christmas. Okay. I think for me, that's where the passion for fashion started. Okay. Um, just being different yeah. and not dressing like all the other kids because yeah. I remember mm -hmm. <laughs> um, when you will go to the market to buy your Christmas dress. Yeah. I remember there's always going to be that one piece that everybody buys for their kids. Oh, okay. But mom always, you know, goes the other way. Okay. She's like, no, you guys are not wearing this. I know everybody's buying it, but yeah. you guys are not wearing it. Oh, okay. And so I am extremely thankful for that. Okay. And then I think when I turned nine or 10, she yes. started giving us the freedom to just go to the market by ourselves. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, and pick up our own Konyo? stuff. Oh yeah. Okay. We'll go to Konyo Konyo. Sometimes custom. Since okay. we live in Hainyakama, custom yes. was so close. Yes. Um, so yeah, we'll just go there and shop around okay. as little girls. Yes. Um, I remember also getting my first pair of high heels when I was <laughs> 11 years old. Yeah. I was in Khartoum. Okay. Um, yeah. Went there for the holidays. Yes. 
and we went Christmas shopping mm. and I saw this gorgeous black wedge. Mm -hmm. I just fell in love. I bought that pair of high heels so fast. Yeah. But I also could not wear it more mm -hmm. than two hours a day. Okay. I kid you not, I wore to church by the time we went to <laughs> Medan for yes. the activities. Yes. The shoes was just on my hand just for the dangling. rest of the day. That's okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I remember those, okay. you know, fond memories. Also remember and just redesigning everything. Okay. At like 12 years old, yeah. 13. Yeah. I just love cutting things off oh, okay. and redesigning them, okay. you know, making them my own. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Recently, you made a TikTok video about the problem of homelessness in the community here yeah. uh, in Calgary. And I must thank you for that video because it prompted uh, me to come down to Calgary and, you know, go and see it for myself, what the streets are like. Um, so the video initially, I just wanted to bring raise an awareness okay. in the community because I wasn't sure if they have, if our people have been seeing what has been happening or what's going on in the community. Yes. Now, I work in downtown yes. and I have been working in downtown for like the last maybe 10 years now. Okay. And so I see a lot of the changes that are happening, especially with our people. Yes. And like I said in one of my videos, I remember back before COVID, we only had a handful yes. of homeless South Sudanese, I yes. kid you not. Um, and we all knew them, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. Um, but recently, every time I come back mm -hmm. from work, yes. you know, I hop on the train or during summer, usually I will walk yes. from my work all the way to like city hall or yes. sometimes to the public library, yes. just location scouting. Okay. <laughs> you know, I just need a new location for okay. videos and whatnot. And I've been seeing mm -hmm. the number Increase. of the South Sudanese homeless mm -hmm. increasing. I don't know how to explain it, but yeah. it kind of triggered me a little okay. that this is happening so much. Mm -hmm. And I've been seeing also, you know, some of my age mates, yes. you know, as someone who went here, yeah. <laughs> who went to high school here, yeah. I see a couple of like these young ones that mm -hmm. grew up with me yes. on the street now. But you also have some of the uncles or some of the aunties now. Yes. And for me, the ones that particularly breaks my heart is the young ones. Yeah. Like I've seen even some 15, 16 year olds yeah. out on the street now, which is heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. And now I can't fully blame the parents, yes. you know, because this country, it teaches us that we're free. Yes. And so a lot of the kids, they feel that they are free, they can do whatever, whatever they doing. want, yeah. Yeah. which is not true, mm -hmm. to be honest, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we all need each other. Yes. We need our family. Mm -hmm. And as the young ones, we also need to respect our parents, yeah. respect the elders in the community. When they're saying something, advising us, we should be listening. Yeah. Now, but that's not the point. The reason I made the video is honestly just to raise awareness and yeah. bring that to our attention. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we can work together yeah. and see what we can come up with. Oh, okay. Now, the TikTok video, the responded, the respond that I made yes. was one of the guys kind of commented that I was being heartless, you know, why would I say such a thing? Mm -hmm. And I was like, how am I heartless mm -hmm. for speaking the truth? Yeah. Because I honestly don't think he realizes Mm -hmm. how bad the situation is. Yes. And it's not even just in Calgary. Yeah. I've had people reached out and told me, hey, you're, you're telling truth. I see them all the time. Yeah. It breaks my heart. It's embarrassing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's not just Calgary. Yeah. It's in cities like Edmonton as yeah. well. Yeah. You know, I haven't heard about anywhere else, but my I assumption mean, it's, it's is... It's the same. In, in Vancouver, it's the same. In, yeah. in Toronto, it's the same. There you so go. So it's all over the yeah, place. So yeah, so it's all over the place. And yeah. I feel that as a community, we need to come together yeah. and come up with a solution. Yeah. Because the government is clearly mm -hmm. not doing anything and yeah. they're not going to. Yeah. And so my suggestion was that, you know, maybe we should start sending them back home yeah. to the villages. Because yeah. I feel that 
since the country is not doing any good for them anymore, yeah. it's up to us as fellow brothers and sisters yeah. to take that action and at least Do give something, them right? something better. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, one of the elders I talked to uh, did suggest that, um, you know, as a community, we can do something here. Yes. And, and today, for example, I was downtown Calgary too, um, with the youth, the South Sudanese youth of Canada, yeah. um, giving out gift hampers to the homeless. Little things like that can go a long way in helping us, sure. right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, now, I completely understand too that some of them are heavy mm -hmm. into drugs and alcohol and things like that. Yes. And so, you know, for many of us, we don't really feel safe mm -hmm. <laughs> to have them kind of come back into the house because we just, we don't know how to handle this type of behaviors too. Okay. Like I have a, funny enough, okay. my next door neighbor, actually okay. my neighborhood there, yes. um, has a daughter who's an addict. Oh wow. But they keep her in the house, Okay. you know, with her addiction, she can go out, do whatever she wants, yeah. but at least she knows that she has the home to come to. Yeah. And I feel that for us as South Sudanese, we're just so quick. Mm -hmm to just let them go Justice because, size, you yeah. know, they're yeah. dangerous or they're not living to our expectations as parents. And you're just like, you know, those are just some things that I'm also trying to understand mm -hmm. because I don't know mm -hmm. how the parents are feeling or what the reasons those kids are out on the streets. But yes. I feel that they need to reach out to those kids. Yeah and make them feel safe and let them know that they have a home yeah. to come to. Yeah. And hopefully, maybe that will help, yeah. <laughs> you know. It, there, there, there's definitely um, something that any one of us can do, right? Yeah. I was shocked today too, um, a colleague of mine, yeah. even very surprised uh, on the street too. So it can happen to anybody, right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, let's get back um, into fashion. <laughs> um, I know it's a gift for you, and you started very early. Yeah. Um, what would you say uh, about people who do body shaming? Like, why are you showing off your body? Oh, you have this body or that kind of body? I mean, I always say that I am not here okay. to judge anybody. Yes. And I'm also not here to tell people, you know, what you should be wearing or what you should not be wearing. Now, as a stylist, it is my job to make sure that you look impeccable, okay. regardless of your shape, yeah. you know, regardless of your body, yeah. um, whether you're short or tall, mm -hmm. skinny, you know, a little bit on the curvy side, we okay. can all look good. Okay. Um, so body shaming for me is a no-no, okay. you know, it's unacceptable. Yeah. Um, and just as humans, to be honest, we need to start being a lot more understanding. Okay. If you don't like something, it doesn't mean you have to respond to it. Yes. You know, sometimes yeah. just let it be. Mm -hmm. There are just some things you can control and others you can't. You cannot, yeah. And those that you cannot control, let them go. Yeah, okay. You know, it's not our job to sit <laughs> here and dictate. Yeah, that's true. Because we're not created the same. Yeah. We'll never be the same either. So that, that's true. None yeah. of us is a copyright. Yeah. Um, you you do a lot of South Sudanese music I through do. your content. Yeah. What's the inspiration behind it? To be honest with you, um, I was on TikTok quite a lot. Okay. And I hear a lot of the sounds and whatnot. Yeah. And most of the times it was just Afrobeat, you yeah. know, yeah. Ghanaian, Nigerian, yeah. Congolese. And I've grown up on all of this music. Okay. And our South Sudanese music industry yeah. is growing mm -hmm. you know we are getting new talents yeah. every single day yeah. some amazing ones some yeah. not so amazing one okay. but hey <laughs> you know to each their own yes. um yeah. i wanted to use my platform to promote okay. our artists our talent yes. and the beautiful music yeah. uh, you know i made a video earlier last year as well yeah. just 
urging DJs to start playing yeah. South Sudanese music at parties as well. Yeah. Because I feel that as South Sudanese, we don't really play enough of our music at parties and things like that. Okay. And so I want us as South Sudanese to start embracing our talents, mm -hmm. start embracing our music, regardless yeah. of which language or which tribe it's been singing. You know, for me, South Sudanese music is South Sudanese music. Yeah. And as you go through my page, yeah. you can, all types, yeah. all the different musicians, you'll find them on my page there. Yeah. You know, I'm not here about this one is from this tribe or this one is, it, we're all South Sudanese at the end of the day yeah. and let's support each other because if we don't, yeah. if you are only supporting those from your village yeah. or from your tribe, yeah. who's going to support the other ones, mm -hmm. you know? So I want all of us as South Sudanese to start using our platforms, especially those of us on social media yeah. who use a lot of South Sudanese music. Yeah. I would love to see more of South Sudanese music rather than just one tribe all the time okay. on your page, okay. you know, yeah. so that's the goal. Which is your favorite music right now? Ooh, currently, mm. I do have few. Okay. Um, it changes every day, to okay. be honest. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So every day, new artists. Yeah. Um, but few favorites. Which, which is the last last one you remember you played? Ooh, the last one I played. Yeah. Let me think. Any John Frog, Lady Caller, maybe. I play so many. Now yeah. I don't listen to enough. Okay. John Frog. Okay. Um, I mean, I do love. There is nothing you can do about it. Okay. Only because I've been getting a lot of hate as well. Yeah. And so I'm like, well, there's really nothing you can do about it, though. Mm -hmm. Even if you think I'm stupid, <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> there is nothing you can do about it. Okay. Um, but I love Franco okay. Lokonyumi. Yes. He's one of my favorite. He's yeah. always on my playlist on the daily. Okay. Um, and then you also have a brand new talent by the name of Samaika. Okay. Um, amazing young talent yes. uh, just played mashallah this morning actually okay. <laughs> um, beautiful song i think i might make a video with it as yeah. well yeah. just to try and promote the song because okay. he's releasing the music video very soon yeah. um who else do i like do you have any waja music oh i do like waja okay um yeah. now which one do i like what was he, was the he new only one has the, three songs yes, he, that he, I know the, of. The one with the uh, music video, is it? Yes, uh, the, he has the, um, Intiram, yes. right? That was the first one. Yes. And then there was Mashallah. Yes. And then he also has um, the other one with the Gurush Ketir gang. Oh, okay. okay. Um, what is it called? Okay. It slips my mind. Okay. But yes, I do like that song, Relax. Relax, okay. Yes, okay. I do like that song as well. Okay. Um, and then the most recent one is Maske. Maske, yes. Yes. That That's the one with the um, Ama Piano beat? Yes. Okay. I do love that one. Okay. Um, but I also love Kujo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you know this, yeah. um, but yes, I do love Kujo's music. I think he's a great rapper. Yeah. Just needs a lot more, you know, promotion yes. and push. And yeah. so I'm like, you know what, this is the one to watch out for uh, when it comes to the rap. Definitely for the folks out there, if you're listening to the sit down with the DC, <laughs> you'll get to hear that song from Kuja, oh, right? See? Yes, yeah. you, you should. Yeah. Um, Ganamaya is the most recent one. Yes. Um, but I also love Nefsu Bamba okay. with Koko San. Yes. And another one of my favorites, Koko San, Koko -san too, yeah. as well. Yeah. He's been in the game for a while, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. A few years and, now. And did a comeback recently. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I do love his music. Yes. Um, when it comes to the females, yeah. I do love and respect, um, what's her name? Honey Breaver. Okay. I love her. Yeah. Uh, but I also like Juna the Star. Yes. I think she is a force to be reckoned with for sure. Are you following the drama between her and MT7? I, now, when it comes to the drama though, mm -hmm. I feel like MT7 was just trying to push a button. Okay. And I am happy mm -hmm. 
super glad that mm-hmm. social media called them out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because I watched the interview and I'm like, if you do respect yeah. the mother of your child, as yeah. you were saying, yes. there is no need mm-hmm. to disrespect her like that. I feel like that was disrespectful, okay. to be honest. Yeah. As a man, he yeah. sh- should have never said that. He, he did apologize though, right? He did. Yes, yes. And they made up. Okay. And you know what? I'm happy. Yeah. You know, do your thing. Yeah. But I also feel like maybe that was just for publicity. Yeah. Maybe it was just a publicity stunt. A publicity stunt? <laughs> <laughs> the, in Tanzania, they call it Kiki? I, I, I think that's what it was. Okay. Because okay. it got everybody talking, you know, it got into a whole little thing with Juna as well, the back and forth. And yeah. so he apologized. And I was like, yeah. You know, there was no need for it. Well, if it was a kick, he did amazingly good, right? Because you're talking about good. it now. Yes, yeah. that was good. <laughs> now, that's the kind of publicity stunts we like. Okay, okay. Just pick a fight with someone you know. Don't yeah. just pick fights with and solve random it, people. Solve it at home. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. You know. So, uh, let's talk about your hair. Oh, yes. Beautiful hair, by the way. Oh, thank what you. What inspired the golden style? Because I think it's a common vogue thing going on in Juba right now. <laughs> well, I wasn't following the trend. Okay. You okay. know, I, I for one, I like to kind of be different. Yes. Um, but I was speaking to a friend not too long ago, yeah. and he kind of suggested I should try out white hair. Okay. You know, and I was thinking about. It. I was like, hmm, I don't know. I'm not sure if that's my thing yeah. but then i've been seeing a lot of people yeah. also going yeah. you know like the silver gray look yes. and i was like you know what it's not so bad <laughs> um and then one of my fans actually on facebook yes. commented once yeah. why didn't you try silver oh, you okay. know okay. like i like this gold hair you got going on but you yeah. should try the silver Silver it might okay. just look amazing i was like you know what yeah. few people have been asking for it let me try it out yeah so I did the bleaching myself. Yeah, yeah. It took about two rounds of bleaching. Okay. And an hour and a half each time. Yeah. And so we like it for now. Mm-hmm. I think I like this grandma vibes it gives. Oh, okay. Okay. You know? okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Definitely celebrity, yeah, right? So I do love it for yeah. sure. And and um, recently the the, the IGP, mm-hmm. the the police boss in Juba, Ooh, yes. was going hard against the Rastafarians out there, the guys mm-hmm. with the dreadlocks. Yeah. What would you say about that? And do, do you think it was um, called for? Like, uh, why would you target people with certain kind of hairstyles? Is it necessary or? Personally, mm. I feel it was unnecessary. Okay. And I also don't want to say too much because I feel like Everybody has already expressed okay. how I f- how I felt. <laughs> yeah, okay. um, a lot of the musicians were, you know, taking stand okay. and saying they're not all criminals. Not everybody with dreads is a criminal, mm-hmm. and I absolutely agree. Mm-hmm. And I haven't looked deep into the whole issue actually as okay. to what started it yeah. and why the IGP is actually going for this yeah. Rastafarians yeah. because. I just, I don't get it, Okay. you know, um, our hair, for me personally, I think yeah. my hair is not me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's just me. Yes. So I can do whatever style I want, go yeah. bald. Yeah. It's just hair. Yes. But for some people, their hair is a part of them Yeah. and it's hard to change or let go yeah. of their hair and I completely understand that. Yeah. So for me I just thought that was unfair okay. and uncalled for. Okay. But I just, you know, I don't know what was happening. <laughs> well, it, it it seems to um prompt the comedians to have a ball because there's many videos out there Ooh, that yes. they made reacting to it. Yeah. Very funny ones. Um, yeah. I mean, even some of the artists, they started photoshopping, you know, their head as bald and... Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've been seeing a lot of pictures. Um, but yeah, I thought it was just an interesting thing. Yeah. So, 
but you know, to yeah. each their own. Okay. You love your hair yeah. and you want to keep it, you know. For yeah. me, hair is just hair. I'm not really <laughs> attached to it like that. Okay. Yeah. There are many little girls out there who would want to follow in your footsteps. You know, the likes of, um, you know, Naomi Campbell, you know, um, the, the Alec works out there. Mm -hmm. What would you say to encourage the little ones who want to pursue um, fashion and style and modeling as a career? Um, you now, for the modeling, I honestly cannot speak too much on that mm -hmm. because I am not like a professional or more on an international level kind of model. Now, I do model sometimes. Yeah. Um, when brands ask me to, you know, come and model for them yes. or do fashion shows and things like that, yes. I go and I do that. Uh, my main thing is definitely the fashion styling. Yes. And, you know, if you have the passion for it, do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we all have our callings. Yes. For some people, it's to become a doctor. For others, it's, you know, becoming a therapist or you know, whatever you want to become. Yeah. And then there are some of us who just have this passion for fashion. Yeah. And that's just the way we see life, you okay. know? Okay. Um, so definitely pursue that. Yeah. Um, don't let anybody talk you out of your passion. Yeah. You know, do what feels right to you mm -hmm. all the time. Always yeah. follow your heart. Most of the mama and baba out there, they prefer you don't become a fashion, you know, <laughs> or, or an artist. Or they prefer you like a doctor, lawyer, engineer. Yeah. Um, did you face any hurdles doing your thing? I mean, with the fashion, luckily not so much. Okay. Because it, it's just one of these things yeah. that I've always loved since I was little. Okay. And I think... Most of my family saw that in me. And they supported you? Um, you know, they have been super supportive. Okay. Like, if you talk to some of my aunties, they call me Nashaka. Okay. It's one of my nicknames. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> so, Nashaka, it just means, you know, you can take it as someone who loves dressing up. Or oh, okay. you can also take it as someone who just... Because for me, I'm obsessed with tucking my shirts in. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so they started calling me Nashaka, Nashaka, Nashaka. I was okay. like, you know what? I actually yeah. like that nickname. Okay. Um, but yes, so my family have always been super supportive okay. of what it is I wanted to do. Now, academically though, yeah. I did a little bit because growing up, I wanted to be a teacher. Oh, okay. Yeah, until oh. I came to this country, yeah. went to high school, mm -hmm. and I saw how children here treated... Treat teachers. Treat teachers. Yeah. I honestly felt so bad. And I used, back in my high school, my history teacher, mm -hmm. she just went through the worst with some of these teenagers okay. to a point where sometimes she will just sit behind her desk yeah. and I will see her crying. Oh, wow. And it just, it used to break my heart mm -hmm. seeing her like that because yeah. coming from South Sudan where we were taught to respect our teachers like we respect our parents, yes. seeing such behavior, to me, it was just shocking. Mm -hmm. Like I was shocked that literally children are allowed to speak to their teachers mm -hmm. in such way. Yeah. And I thought to myself, I was like, if I become a teacher in this country, yeah. I might end up in jail one day <laughs> for beating some of the students. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and so I was like, you know what? No, no okay. teacher for me anymore, at least not in this country. Okay. Um, and then I wanted to do social work. Okay. But then I kind of got pushed out of it a little bit because okay. it was like, oh, you should become an accountant oh, okay. since you're good at this or you yeah. should te go to nursing. Yeah. And I, you know, the whole hospital nursing thing was never my thing. Yeah. I never really liked the hospital. I don't like the hospital. <laughs> and so, blood. yeah. So okay. when someone tells me to like work in like the healthcare, and I was yeah. like, there's just no way. Okay. So... I just, I didn't even get into that. Okay. So I feel like maybe one day I will get back into the social work. Okay. But for now, we'll just focus on the fashion yes. aspect and then, 
you know, you never know. Uh, so uh, when you focus on the fashion, does it pay? The, do, do you make enough I do. From that? Um, okay. Currently, not so much because okay. I am still building my clientele. Yes, yes. But it's definitely there because you'll be surprised okay. by how many people need help oh, okay. just getting dressed yes. out here. You yes. know, yeah. people are always kind of don't know mm -hmm. what works for their body or, yeah. you know, what kind of things they should be buying, what yeah. they should be wearing to this or this event or to the work yeah. and any of that. There is a lot of people out here who just don't know how to put outfits together. <laughs> is, 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 that, is that something that you're looking uh, to, to doing long term, like um, building a fashion brand? Yes. Okay. Um, now, I actually, I have a fashion brand. Okay. It's called Rosaline by Estella. And so for the next year, that's the goal. Just okay. Just bringing, reviving the fashion brand yeah. and reworking it and yeah. kind of creating my favorite pieces yeah. so that people who love my style can also be able to wear it. Okay. And one of the things I'm looking into as well is how do I make it affordable okay. where it doesn't cost too much to make, yeah. but it also doesn't cost the customer too much, too much yeah. you know? Yeah. So it's just about finding that medium balance. Yeah. For, yeah. For, for folks starting out in the social media thing, yeah. You are a veteran, I guess, in the field like that. <laughs> um, 85, you made it 85 I today, I made right? it to 85 this yeah, morning congratulations on for Facebook. That. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So I'm, I'm barely getting started. Yeah. Um, what advice would you give someone like me um, to, 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 you know, to, to go the steps in the social media arena? Um, what everybody else says. Okay. You know, stay consistent. Okay. Now, I have been posting my outfits, and a lot of people don't know this. They okay. think I kind of just appeared on social media and kind of boom. Yes. Um, but no, I've actually been sharing my outfits on Facebook since 2012, maybe. Oh, okay. So it's been 10 years oh, okay. in the works. Yeah. And just recently, actually just about six months ago, yeah. a couple of my videos went viral. Oh, nice. On Facebook, yeah. which kind of brought in all these new followers and yeah. it's only been getting bigger, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. But consistency. Okay. You know, that's the main thing. Yeah. Regardless, even if you get two likes, yeah. don't give up. Okay. It's still get up, make the content that you love, yeah. post it. You know, because you just never know. You never know. That's the thing with the social media. <laughs> um, you just never know when mm -hmm. it might blow up. Yeah. Um, so continue posting if you can. You yeah. know, I try to do a couple posts okay. per day. Yeah. Um, so you'll have like my get ready, you'll have pictures, and then you'll also have, you know, just the random one okay. outside. So I try to make at least three posts per day. Per day, okay. On my TikTok, it's usually one to two posts. Okay. Mm. And then while you are on Facebook as well, yeah. I find that it's important to engage yes. with your with the followers. Fans and audience, yeah. yeah, make sure you're engaging with them. If they are commenting, make sure you're responding back. Okay. Um, because if you are not, yes. Facebook literally tells you okay. to respond to this okay. many people. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so Mr. Zuckerberg wants oh, his money, I know. right? It's yeah. like you gotta sit there, and <laughs> it's so hard, yes, especially when you're like running a couple of socials. It's yeah. very hard to, to, to kind to of keep find the, the time and keep it at pace because yeah. it's like some days you get hundreds of yeah. comments, and it's yeah. like, okay, yeah. which ones am I responding to? Mm -hmm. So, for me, right now, it's all about trying to find a balance. It's also important to find a balance. Okay. Um, I find that I get stuck sometimes on Facebook for hours just responding to comments. To comments. Are you planning? Uh, one thing maybe is to, to contract, um, you know, subcontract to somebody who can do it for you. Is that possible? Is that a good idea? Currently, if you can afford it, yeah. yes. Okay. Totally. Um, but for me personally, I just, since I can't afford that right now, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do it all by myself. Yeah. And so I try to respond to as many comments as I can, as can okay. every single day. Okay. Um, just to keep 
engaging mm -hmm. and because when you are engaging yeah. with them yeah. the more facebook will push your video oh, okay. as well so okay. it's definitely very important to engage yeah. stay consistent find balance um and just keep creating what you love yeah because people will see it yeah. and that's what they will connect to when oh, they okay. see that passion they see that joy that whatever it is you're doing gives you, yes. they connect to it more. So. Oh, okay. Fashion role models. Oh, fashion role models. Mm. Um, I definitely will say my mother. Okay. She's definitely top of the list. She's like my fashion model, my role model, my everything. Okay. Um, but when it comes to celebrities, I also, you know, I don't have a lot of celebrities that I'm like, oh, you know, they're like my icon. Okay. But if I can choose one person that will be Catherine, okay. the Princess of Wales. Oh, okay. I think she always dresses so classy, so impeccable. Oh, okay. Love her fashion. Yes. And then every once in a while, of course, you will have Angelina Jolie in there. Mm -hmm. um, I've been loving Kelly Rowland okay. lately. Yeah. I think the outfits have just been on fire. There's a denim outfit a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. I'm already thinking about recreating it because okay. I loved it so much. <laughs> okay. Um, who else? Who else fashion do I like? Oh, Zendaya. Oh, Zendaya. Okay. Absolutely okay. love that girl. I think everything she puts on is just stunning. A Easy. Anybody from South Sudan or Africa? From Africa. Mm. Ooh, that's a Lupita, good question. Maybe? I mean, Lupita is great. Yes. Um, every once in a while, there's just an outfit that will pop out. I was like, yeah. And that's how it is for me with a lot of the celebrities. Like, they're not so much of like role models. Mm -hmm. I don't search for them every single day, but yeah. every once in a while, I'll just see an outfit. I'm like, that. That's a good look. You know, it's just perfection. Okay. Um. Do, do you follow the fashion trends in South Sudan, like the Nile Couture, the Miss South Sudan? Oh, not too much. Okay. I probably should. Okay. I've been trying to, to okay. be honest. Okay. Um, I've also been getting a lot of these ideas okay. um, just to focus on the South Sudan yeah. fashion and kind of celebrity styles and whatnot. Yeah. I think starting next year, that's okay. what I'll probably get into more. Yeah. Do kind of more evolution of style on most of the stars. Yeah. And just see how the fashion have changed yeah. throughout the years and will continue to change. I'm excited to see that. Okay. Um, but one of the stars that I'm really happy and I can see with a strong sense of style and, you know, just a personal style level, yeah. again, Juna the star. Oh, okay. I think her style just matches her so well. Mm -hmm. She always look amazing. Okay. Love it. Um, the other stars, you know, every now and then we'll get some cute little outfit. Okay. Um, for the guys, I see they've been getting into a lot of the hip hop kind of look. looks yeah. lately. Yeah. Um, and I'm still trying to, you know, get into that because... Mm -hmm. I like a classic dressed up man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm all about, you know, dressed up in the suits and whatnot. Okay. But I also understand the weather yeah. back there. Yeah. does not allow you to be in three-piece suits <laughs> three or two-piece suit, suit in Juba. every single day. Yeah. Impossible. Yeah. Um, but I do love that the men are definitely playing more with okay. fashion yeah. than the ladies. Okay. Yeah. I guess I did like a, maybe a four or three in today. You did a three piece. Mm. No, in, got... in terms of rating, one to ten. <laughs> <laughs> one to ten. Yes. Let me see. Mm -hmm. I will give you a six. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll take that. Okay. Considering I put myself at zero most of the time. <laughs> so, Why? Okay. I mean, I have zero sense of fashion. I just go with whatever, right? Or maybe so you think. Yeah. But it works. Yeah. You okay. Know? Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, what was the last thing you bought? The skirt and the top. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> okay. Uh, what yeah. was the last fashion magazine you looked at? Oh, recently? Yeah. Have I looked into any fashion magazine recently? Even the online websites? Um, I love Vogue. 
Vogue, okay. Especially the British Vogue. Oh, okay. It's one of my favorite because the okay. styling is always impeccable. Okay. Um, the cover is always stunning as well. The, the chief stylist is an African, right? Oh, um, was a Nigerian guy. I think she. I think he has resigned. Yeah, but he gave it to another African, I think. Ooh. Yeah, I think. I'm. I'm just. Okay. I think. I think. Yeah. Oh, I need to look it up. Yeah, you should look it up. I haven't. Yeah. Because I know it was uh, an info, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. So how how do you um, balance between you know staying on trend, staying in vogue, plus a timeless look? I focus more on the timeless looks yeah. than trends. Okay. Because trends come and go mm -hmm. all the time. YSL. <laughs> okay. Yeah, trends come and go. Yeah. Very quick, just like the seasons. Yes. And so I do my best not to focus on trends, especially. The micros and the mini trends that usually pop up. Okay. Um, I focus more on classic pieces or just things that I love, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. Like when I go shopping, I want to love that item to add into my closet. Okay. I don't go, oh, it's on trend. No, that's not my thing. Um, but yes, yeah, so focus more on things that you love and yeah. you want to wear because when you love them you will wear them okay as for the trends you know the trendy pieces they're good for now yeah by next season you have to get rid of them so yeah. is it really worth it oh okay you know yeah. so i stay away from the trends oh okay yeah so uh, i i noticed you know being a fashion stylist you have a lot of collection right what do you do with the clothes after showcasing them do you give uh, them away do you ooh. keep them I have them all in my closet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, so my videos that you see yes. uh, of me just getting ready, these are just items in my closet. Okay. I have like a whole bedroom. Oh, okay. So one of the wall is the shoe wall with the yeah. handbags. Yeah. And then the whole other, you know, three walls are yeah. all just closet space. Okay. Okay. Um, so I have my blazers, my dresses, the blouses up top. Okay. Um, lots of folded things. Mm -hmm. And then my coats currently I've moved into a different area yeah. of the house. Yeah. Because that's just how much things we yeah. have. Yeah. Um, in my bedroom, I also have like this closet space. Yeah. Filled as, you know, full with stuff. Yeah. So... But what I like to do, though, every yeah. now and then, I'll yeah. purge. Oh, okay. So every once in a while, I get rid of some things that are not fitting right anymore. Yeah. Or, you know, I just feel like maybe we don't need them. Yeah. I have issues letting go of things, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> because everything in my closet, yeah. I love. Okay. And so for me to part ways, it's yeah. very difficult. Yeah. I hardly get rid of things, but yeah. I try to every once in a while to donate. Mm -hmm. um, I will give them to cousins who will fit them yes. or just anybody really okay. who wants. And then if I can't find anybody to take them, then I just take them to the donation center. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's nice. Um, so what's the last book you read? Oh, I don't even remember. Oh, okay. So <laughs> I guess you're not too big into books then? No, um, not so much. Yeah. But when I do, I usually read like the romance novels. Okay. Um, or sometimes I'll do like the autobiographies. Okay. Um, I think the last one I read was Shania Twain. Shania Twain, okay. Yeah. Her, uh, it, it, she's coming to Edmonton, right? Is she coming to Calgary to, to perform? She was in Calgary. Okay. Not too long ago. Okay. Now I don't know if she's coming back again. Yeah. Um, but I do, I do love her. Oh, okay. Love her music. Yeah. You know, back in Egypt, yeah. she was actually one of the few singers that I listened to a lot. Okay. And she got me into country music. Yeah. So if you ask me, country music is one of my favorite music genres. Oh, really? So... Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what, was that also the inspiration? Because I know you, you do a lot of hats. Or is it the president's uh, inspiring <laughs> you? The South Sudanese president. Um, I mean, it could be both. Why okay. not? Okay. 
Um, but no, I do love hacks. Okay. Like even back in Egypt, yeah. um, I've always loved the hacks. Yeah. I think it kind of just gotten worse yeah. when I got here. Yeah. I mean, we're missing it today, yeah. um, which is unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> but I do love them, especially the white brim hats. Yeah. Um, I think it just completes an outfit for me. What, one fashion thing you said, uh, which I picked up from one of your videos, is yeah. when wearing a hat, you should not put on glasses. I mean, it is a personal thing. Oh, okay. You know, and like I said, yeah. I'm not here. To judge you yeah. or tell you what to wear or not what not to wear yeah. but just personally i like to pick one okay. or the other oh okay it's either the glasses or the or hat, the hat. Okay. because i feel like just putting them both on i yeah. don't know it's I, covering too much it looks funny <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry yeah. like for me it just yeah. it looks funny so i always you know do i want the glasses or do i want the hat mm -hmm. Um, and most of the times, I'll go with the hat. Okay. But summer times, I try to incorporate the glasses in there as well. So what's one of your biggest phobia? Okay, so when it comes to fashion, my biggest phobia is underwear lines. Okay. I think it irritates me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it just makes an outfit look really cheap. So okay. If you can, you know, try as much as possible to just avoid underwear lines. Okay. We can make a video on undergarments and okay. proper ones that don't give you lines. Okay. Um, another thing is just super oversized clothes. Okay. Like oversized t-shirt, oversized pants that are like falling off, you know. <laughs> what, what, what would you say about Kanye West's kind of uh, style then? You know, there are some elements that I like yes. when it comes to Kanye West style. Yes. Um, I love that he's got the confidence to carry some of these outfits. Yeah. Me personally, I, I won't wear some of this stuff. Okay. Like the big puffer jacket. Yes. I love it. Yeah. I actually bought one yeah. in red. Yes. And every time I wear it out, somebody's like, oh, you look like Kanye West. I'm like, well, <laughs> you know, I just, I love the jacket. Okay. So there are some elements of Kanye's fashion that I love. Yeah. Um, but just for the regular folks, yeah. you know, we also live in a world where you're perceived by the way you look. Okay. You know, people always judge you by how you look. Yes. Nobody has the time to get to know you and we can't know you just by looking at you. Mm -hmm. We have to sit down with you, talk to you, you yeah. know, build that relationship yeah. to get to know you. So it's important that you show up okay. how you want to be perceived. Okay. That's my thing. Okay. So, and I also find that, you know, over the years, I find that people treat me differently. Oh yeah. Based on how I dress. Oh, okay. And I always try to explain this to people and people are like, no, you're not real. I'm like, try it. Mm. You know? Like when I'm well dressed with my high heels, you know, my hat, my coat, I look nice. The gentlemen, usually, they treat me nicely. Oh, okay. They will hold the doors for me, they mm. will say hello. Mm -hmm. You know, people are just a lot nicer. Okay. But then I have days where I just dress up like whatever mm -hmm. and nobody even pays attention to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not for attention. Yeah. You know, not that I want the attention on me all the time. Yeah. But I just, I want to be treated with respect. Yeah. I want somebody to look at me and be like, I can't mess with that one. Mm -hmm. She look like she knows what she's doing. And also being in the fashion, I have to look the part. Yeah. Because when I don't look like I know what I'm talking about, nobody trusts me. Mm -hmm. I find that a lot of customers, a lot of the times just where I work, okay. they'll come to me and they're like, you look like you know mm -hmm. what you're doing. So yeah. I have a question for you. <laughs> okay. Like that's the first thing they always say. Like okay. you look like you, you know. know what you're doing. Yeah. So yeah. I have a question. I was like, Okay, well, mm -hmm. <laughs> thanks. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so it is extremely important. And it is true that you dress how you want to be perceived. You have to dress okay. for the role that you want. It is extremely important. Yeah. Um, so dressing definitely plays a big part. Okay. And 
one of my favorite quotes is style is an extension of your personality mm -hmm. so yeah my personality is what my outfits are a lot of the oh, times nice. and people don't get to know that until they meet me oh okay because okay. i also find that people just look at some of my videos and they're like oh you look you know cocky or you look so mean sometimes mm -hmm. Um, or they just hate for no reason. I'm like, well, at least get to know me. Yeah. You know, before you start judging, judging and yeah. make decisions. Don't judge a book by I'm its cover. I'm a good person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that's just the way people are. You can change them sometimes. Yeah, so what would you tell someone who either appreciates your fashion sense or does not appreciate your fashion sense in those two different Ooh, ways? So for those who get it? Yes. I love you. And thank you for getting it. Okay. Um, for those who don't get it, yeah. it's okay. You know, you don't have to get my fashion. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, fashion is for everybody, mm -hmm. but style is personal. Okay. You know, yeah. and I, for one, I like to dress based on how I feel. Okay. So some days I wake up and I feel like a badass. I put on the most badass outfit you yeah, know whatever yes. that may be yeah. some mornings i wake up and i feel like if i'm feeling sexy i'm gonna dress up a little bit sexy mm -hmm. so of course you're gonna see a little bit of skin here but it's very classy very elegant and every once in a while you know i just feel like i just want to throw something on mm -hmm. and get out of the house okay <laughs> <laughs> so there is those days too. Okay. Um, so the outfits are not always going to be impeccable mm -hmm. just because I'm not feeling impeccable that day mm -hmm. or I'm not feeling like dressing up to the tents yeah. that morning. So I'm just going to put whatever I want to put together mm -hmm. and get out of the house. As long as it makes sense to me, yeah. it doesn't have to make sense to you. And a lot of the times, unfortunately, it doesn't make sense to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. Yeah. You know, I try to explain it to them sometimes, but I'm also realizing now yeah. that there is no need to explain. Oh, okay. It's yeah. Just it do you yeah. and keep it moving. Okay. Three, two, one. Name three women presidents from Africa, past or present. I do not know any. You want a hint? <laughs> Tanzania, Liberia, Malawi. There's a woman president currently in Africa. I know, but I don't know their names. Okay, Mama Samia. At least you know that they are, right? <laughs> Mama Samia, Suluhu okay. Hassan from Tanzania. Okay. Ellen Salif uh, Johnson, former president of Liberia. Okay. And Mama Joyce Banda, Malawi. So at least, you know. Now I know. I may not know fashion, at least I know God politics. Damn. <laughs> See, I need to follow politics more. Not necessarily. You have people like us. So politics you just get to watch. One, politics is one of these things that I just don't really follow don't much. I don't really care for. Okay, okay. I mean everything in life yeah. is politics. Yeah. And you would think I would be into politics, and yeah. follow politics. Yeah. But unless it's American, where it's shoved <laughs> into our faces yes. every day, yeah. or like the Canadian politics yeah. that are like in our faces every single day on the news, yeah. I don't really, I don't search, I don't look them up. Okay. okay. <laughs> don't, don't worry. Which is kind of sad. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's okay. Well, let's come back to Canada then. Yeah. Um, money. What is the name of the black woman on the $10 bill, Canadian dollar bill? Do you know? Or do you know where she was from? Cha. Too much history, huh? I read about her when the bill came out. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And I think the name is on it. Yes. On the $10 bill. Yeah. So I guess you don't really use money a lot. Oh. You, you use your card. At all times. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Viola Desmond yes, from Nova Scotia. That's her. Yeah, she was a human rights activist yeah, and a businesswoman. I read about her when they put her face on the, when they were releasing the ten dollar with her face on it. They yeah. actually had like a whole article yeah. about it, and I read it. Yeah. And the name is on the bill. On the bill, yeah. Yeah. But you know, if you don't get to handle it a lot, then it's not really. I mean, you can handle it a lot, but. We don't really read what's yeah. written on the bills, except That's for right. the numbers, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is it a five, a yeah. twenty-five? Yeah. You know, 
Um, but yes. Yeah. So so this one, the last one is more like a riddle. Um, I lose my head in the morning and gain it back at night. I lose my head in the morning and gain it back at night. Mm -hmm. Is it a of course. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now let's get into the rapid fire. Oh, oh rapid, rapid fire. fire. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't get worried. It's either or. <laughs> <laughs> Six pack tall, dark, and handsome, and broke. Okay. Or pot belly billionaire. Pot belly billionaire. Hmm. Okay. A girl got plans for money. <laughs> you okay. know? I'll yeah. take the pot belly. Okay. I mean, we can also take him to the gym or take him for a C-section. Okay. Less or leather? <laughs> um, both, actually. Okay. Love them both. Okay. Um, paired together or yeah. separately. Okay. Love a lace and a leather. Yeah. Winter or summer wear? Um, summer, yeah. but winter is more fun. Okay. Because of layers. Okay. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Absolutely not. No. Why? I honestly don't understand who decided that was a brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. I don't do Hawaiian. Okay. Um, I don't do anything sweet on food. Okay. You know how in like some cultures, sweet and sour chicken, raisins, yes, and all of that stuff. Yeah. I would always pick out those raisins oh, from the okay. rice, oh, okay. or from the chicken, or okay. whatever dish it's in. Okay. I just I can't do sweet and sour okay. okay. at the same time. So coffee or tea. Tea, definitely. Okay. You, you haven't talked to us more about your dad. Uh, would you mind saying something <laughs> about your dad? Because um, he's been your mom in the story. Yes, yeah. um, because I grew up with my mom okay. and my stepdad. Okay. And now my dad, I've never seen him okay. in my life Yeah. Um, for some circumstances okay. in life. Okay. Um, but the dream is to one day yeah. see him because I'm curious okay. to know what kind of, what, um, you know, what attributes or just, what do you call this thing? Like what, what happened? What Trump? What, no, like what kind of what what kind of person he what is? What kind of traits I got from him? Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but I'm also curious just to find what kind of traits I yeah. got from him. How about I, your stepdad? I am pretty sure that I want to be a teacher because my dad is a headmaster. Okay, your stepdad or my your, dad. your actual dad? Yeah, my actual dad. Okay. Um, but my stepdad actually was an amazing guy. Okay. Um, he passed away. Before oh, my mom. Sorry, may his soul rest in peace. Yeah, passed away before my mom. Okay. And I absolutely respect that guy for raising me as yeah. his own. Yeah. For taking care of me, you mm -hmm. know, and never discriminated. Yeah. Against me or anything like that. Yeah. I've always felt like his own. Mm -hmm. And you don't find a lot of men like that. So yeah. when you do find one of those. Yeah. I ask that you hold him dearly, yeah. you know, respect that man, yeah. um, don't let him go. Yeah. So, yeah. I think we've come to the part you might like. Is it the politics? Oh no, not politics. So I have a oh. little gift for you because I'm a writer. Yeah. So I got you two books. Ooh. Yeah. Um, the first one is a very blank book. That's okay. Yes. It's, it's a blank book and the reason I gave it to you is because I have a publishing gig. And I know you're not much into books, but I feel like stories need to be told. Right. One quote I always say, and it's a proverb from Africa. They say, um, before lions can tell their story, the story of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. The Achola story may not be on social media for those who read books, right? There are many people out there who read books. So I hope this little book I give you will inspire you to put your thoughts down. You can open it. It's pretty blank. Yeah. Yeah. And one day, hopefully, Media House Publishing Canada, which is my gig, will publish your first book. Ooh. Take your time. Um, it, it's it, yeah, it's it, it's gonna be a good thing to 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 put those words down. I would like to ask if you would publish 
the autobiography of a chola. Yes. What would be the title? What would you give it? A name? Mm. Yeah. I give you a hint. The last time the f I was talking to Romeo Odong, yeah. award-winning gospel musician from Uganda. Yeah. Your Leng, the yes. journey. And that's what he chose for oh. his. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So yours would be something leaning more towards fashion. Absolutely. Okay. Um. Ooh. <laughs> so many. Yeah. Like my brain Th is going a, a little crazy. Throw me a few. Um. Living in fashion. Okay. Um. Conquering it all in style. Okay. Um. Yeah. How fashion saves me. Okay. Well, to put out three, I yeah. think you're on the journey. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yeah. And the second one is Lotole the Rabbit Ooh. and the Pot of Porridge. Ah. Right? By yours truly. Published under Media House Publishing Canada, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I hope you'll enjoy it. I know you have. Um, nephews and nieces yeah you can get to read them the story Great. lotole the rabbit is um a trickster character yeah from the central equatoria bari kakua you know pojulu kuku I think I've heard the, the story growing up. yes 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 so th this is my version with a few salts and pepper here yeah, and there we love it. so yeah what would be your last uh parting shot for the folks your fans out there or to our people in South Sudan, or to Canadians here. Kajunibia mm. was very proud mm -hmm. to be from South Sudan, and I would love to relocate back home one day. Mm -hmm. um, my only wish is that our home becomes safe mm -hmm. for all of us, to be able to move back yeah. and live there, enjoy life, raise our kids, mm -hmm. you know, start businesses without worrying about somebody coming and you know breaking into your business or setting it up on fire or anything like that mm -hmm. and also as people yeah. we need to come together yeah and live together again like we used to i remember in the 90s mm -hmm. and you do not we were all one big family. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to be from the same tribe. Mm -hmm. You know, we used to have, my neighbor used yep. to be from Bari, but we also have another Zambian neighbor, we have the Tokosa, and then of course you have us in the middle here, yep. the Diding and the Acholi, mm -hmm. you know, just growing up yeah. as one family. Yeah. And one of the things I definitely love and respect about my mother was the heart that she had for mm -hmm. all of the neighbors. Okay. She treated the older ones like they were her own mother. Um, she would treat the other ones like they were her sisters, you yes. know. Yes. She treated the little ones like her own kids. Um, if they were doing anything wrong, you speak to them. Mm -hmm. You tell them that what they're doing is yeah. wrong. Yeah. You know, care parent, you have to help. Mm -hmm. um, but also, as a mother, you know, it's your job yeah. to teach your kids to become better people, mm -hmm. to respect other people. Mm -hmm. um, and then, as humans, yes. we just need to start living as one. Okay. You know, regardless of the tribe, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what tribe you're from. You know, I was just telling Diddy here that I barely ask people for what tribe they're from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, because for me, as long as you're South Sudanese, yeah. you're automatically, you know, a brother or a sister. Mm -hmm. You become a family. Mm -hmm. You are like an auntie, an uncle. Yeah. Um, for some of them, you become a mom to me. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just the way how I see things. And yeah. that's the way I grew up. So it will definitely be nice to 
have that togetherness in that peaceful country yeah. once again. Yeah. So another thing that I have been thinking about yeah. for our community leaders mm -hmm. and just with the issues that is happening in the community because yeah. I'm still trying to figure out as well who is our community leader. Yes. Because there has been so many leaders, there's official leaders, and then there's leaders that are unofficial. Okay. Um, is that the South Sudanese community in Calgary? Yes. Okay. So I still, I haven't figured out yeah. who the leader is. But this one for the community leaders, in order for you to help the community, mm -hmm. um, not just with the homelessness issue, yes. but the community as a whole, Yeah. To be a better leader, some of you need to stop picking sides mm -hmm. when it comes to problem. Mm -hmm. I think as a leader, you need to be neutral. Okay. You shouldn't be picking sides, you shouldn't be siding with this one, because you already know our people. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. So instead of you as a leader, then trying to work their issues, solve it, get yeah. them together. You're picking sides, mm -hmm. cutting the other person off. I don't think it's helping in any way. Mm -hmm. And also as a leader, you know, it's not just about you and your family. Yeah. Whatever it is you're doing out here, if you are representing the whole community, yeah. please be honest about it and represent the whole community. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are many of you out here who are just holding on to these titles for yourselves, for your kids, you know, maybe for your tribe, but I don't think that's how it should be. Mm -hmm. um, because as South Sudanese, we are big community. Yes. And it's a big responsibility and we need your help to do a lot of things out here as well. So mm -hmm. be ready you know, to take on the task of mm -hmm. handling issues in the community. Yeah. It's not just the little things, but it's also the big things. Pay attention to what's happening. Ask people what they think, mm -hmm. um, what their ideas, what we should be doing, mm -hmm. and kind of just go from there. Okay. You know, I miss the days when the community was so active. Mm -hmm. um, we will have meetings. You know, we had ideas mm -hmm. to even deport the youth that were committing crimes because once upon a time, mm. the crime, like the rates yeah. just here in Calgary was high. Okay. It was almost, I don't know, five, four every month almost. We were just losing youth left and right. Mm -hmm. And so one of the ideas was for those who commit such crimes, maybe deport them. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. um, but of course, parents are going to say no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's where the whole misunderstanding yeah. came in. And yeah. I felt that that's when the whole community just started mm -hmm. kind of fading off. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as leaders, Yajama, let's start putting community first. Um, I know that your family will always come first, but mm -hmm. when you accept, such position yeah you're accepting to put the community first before your personal issues with any other person yeah so stick with that uh, our nation definitely does need a lot of healing right considering the recent war which has fragmented everybody oh, for sure. and people in the diaspora pick sides supporting yeah. this group supporting that group yeah. uh tearing like the fabric that. apart yeah 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 but so. there, there's hope you know People Absolutely. like you who are promoting South Sudanese music generally without considering this tribe or that tribe, it's a big step, right? Um, we, 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 at the end of the day, we are all really one. Like, we are. you know, think about um, in Acholi, for example, what do you call water? In, in Bari, in Kakua, is pio. In Dinka, is pio. Yeah. It's basically the same. Yeah. yeah. The words are the same, the foods are the same, the people are the same. So there's absolutely no reason why we should be hating and killing each other, right? Yeah, At home or in the di in the diaspora, right? Yeah. We're all brothers and sisters. Yeah. Mr. Chola, thank you so much for taking your time to sit thank down you. with me. Um, what would you say to 
my fans out there who are watching the sit down with Dedi Say. Ooh, this guy is amazing. Yeah. We went through his sister, um, which is amazing because I've also met his sister through Facebook. Okay. Amazing enough. Yeah. Um, but it has been an absolute honor sitting down with you. Yeah. I'm gonna sit down yeah. and having a chat. You know, this is just having a chat. Um, trying to bring issues forth for our people mm -hmm. so you are aware yeah. of what's happening in the community yes and if you have a story you would like to share or just anything you would like to sit down about yeah come on and sit down okay and have a chat you know yeah yeah uh, remind people about your social media handles Ooh, um you can find me TikTok at Achola's Closet 2. Yes. Um, for Facebook, it's Achola's Closet. Um, Instagram is also Achola's Closet. Okay. YouTube is Achola's Closet. Yeah. And we should be rolling back onto YouTube shortly. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's been a great pleasure talking to you, Miss Achola. It's an honor. I wish you all the best. And hopefully next time when I see you, I'll be a seven, eight, not a six. <laughs> I'll, I'll You'll pick be a some. ten. Okay. okay. We'll bring the color, the juice, okay. you know, the print. Okay. All of it. I will stop the lawyer look. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much again. <laughs> no, thank you. And wish you all the best. Thank you so it's been much. it's been a pleasure. <laughs> of all time and if it's a wheezy mata do ulana hasiana busy yaki ana gana mind yeah go and leave a fire maybe die la hide in the higher up a school who carry tires i'm a duck and zato get expired my suan like in iron i'm a zaya